Hello. Welcome to Attribute Relationships Concept Module. In this concept module, we're going to look at joints, relates, and relationship classes. My name is Wing Cheong. I'm an assistant director with the Geotech Center and also a professor of geography and GIS at Palomar College in California. So what is it? When we talk about attribute relationships, we're really looking at the association between some geographic feature and other features or tables. To give you an example, we may be looking at a lamppost here. And we want to look at how that lamppost is related to the different light bulbs that are on that lamppost. So you may have one feature class with the location of all the lampposts and also a different table or a different feature class that records all the light bulbs um, that are scattered throughout the city. And through a relationship class, you can show which of the light bulbs are associated with which lamppost. So there are three kinds of attribute relationships we're going to talk about. We're going to look at joints, relates, relationship classes. But regardless of the kind of attribute relationship you're looking at, there needs to be a common feel. This is known as the key that allows the GIS to associate objects in one feature class table with objects in another feature class table. This common field could be of the text data type or numeric data type. So we're going to look at some more examples, or we're going to look at the joints, relates, and relationship classes in greater details in the rest of this presentation. But before we do that, let's look at an example of the key that I talked about in the last slide. As you can see here, we have a pole feature class right? that has mapped out the location of all the utility poles around the city. And then I have another feature class with all the transformers. As you can see, here are the transformers that are attached to the pole. But for the GIS to know which of the transformers is associated with which pole, you can see there needs to be some common field or common column that are storing the same information across the pole feature class and the transformer feature class. So in this example, you can see the key is the FID field in the pole feature class. And since the pole feature class is what we call the origin class in this example, this key of the FID is what we also call the primary key. Now, if we go over and look at the transformer feature class, we can see that it has a pole ID column or pole ID field that stores the same information as the FID field in the pole feature class. And in our example here, since the transformer feature class is the destination class, this pole ID field is what is known as the foreign key. In other words, you can see that by looking at the relationship between FID, which is again our primary key, and the pole ID, which is our foreign key, GIS now knows right, that transformer 305, 308, and 311 belongs to pole number 102. As you can see here, which means they're attached to this particular pole in the pole feature class. So let's look at first joins and relates. Um, joins and relates are commonly used tools in GIS. They're great for modeling simple attribute relationships. So, um, for example, you may use relates in cases like when you're mapping out a restaurant feature class and each of those restaurant points that is in your map 
may have many reviews, like user reviews or visitor reviews attached to each of those points. So in our case, we may just want to, when we click on each of those restaurant points, we may just want to be able to expose or see the number of reviews that are attached to that particular restaurant that we clicked on. But we don't really want to copy or append that all those hundreds of reviews for that restaurant right, to its attribute table. So in a sense, the relate in this example is basically serving as a pointer. So when you click on a restaurant point in the map, it'll point you to an external table that stores the hundreds of reviews that are related to that restaurant, that specific restaurant that you just clicked on. Another commonly used tool in GIS is the join. So the join is a little different than the relate in that the join actually takes the data from that external table and append it to a feature class. And this could be done for different purposes. To give you an example, we may have a state feature class that shows the location of different states in the country. And then we have an external table that stores the election results uh, for each of the states. We may want to join that election results table to the state feature class so that we can change the display of the state to blue or red, depending on if a Democratic candidate or a Republican candidate won the state election. Or uh, if we want to right, label each of the states in the state feature class by the name of the winner, um, which is stored in the election results table. Regardless of whether you're using joint or relates, keep in mind that these behaviors uh, are temporary, um, especially in the joint case. Um, and what I mean by that is it'll only append the data from the external table to your feature class for the duration of your map session. It doesn't actually copy over the data into your feature class, right? So in my example, it doesn't actually copy over the, the election results and winner's data from the external table into the state's feature class. It just builds this temporary joint or this temporary association just so that you can uh, change the visualization of the states based on the results or change the labeling of the states based on the information from that results table. So if you need a more permanent solution uh, or more advanced relationships that you're trying to model in your GIS, you may want to use a relationship class. Relationship classes can be created to associate two tables, a feature class and a table, or multiple feature classes. Unlike joins and relates, which are temporary, as I have mentioned in the last slide, relationship classes is actually a permanent object that is created in the geo database, and it is stored there until it is explicitly deleted. There are also some advanced capabilities in the relationship classes that are not available in joins and relates that we'll go over in the rest of this concept module. So one of these advanced capabilities is um, the ability to model simple or composite relationship. In a relationship class, when you build a simple relationship, then the destination object can exist even when the origin object or origin class is deleted. So to give you an example, I may have the origin class or origin object as a store feature class. 
and the destination class may be a table of different store names like Target, Walmart, Albertsons. Now you can see that if one of the Target stores, right, one of the Target stores points gets deleted because it closed down, right? So again, remember the store feature class is our origin and the name of the stores is our destination class. So what I'm saying is if one of the store points in the feature class gets deleted because one of the target stores closed down, you can see that the name of the store targets in that destination table should still remain because just because one target store closed down doesn't mean all the target stores closed down, right? So you can see that should be a simple relationship because we don't want, right, the deletion or close down of one target store in the origin class to eliminate the entire target store brand or target store name in the destination class. On the other hand, we can also have composite relationship classes um, in that the destination object or destination class cannot exist without the origin class. So to give you one example, let's say if I have the origin class being polygons showing different school campuses and the destination class is another feature class that is showing the polygons of different buildings that are on different campuses. Now again, remember in the composite relationship, right, the lifetime or the lifespan of the origin feature class controls the lifespan of the destination feature class. And in my case, right, the campus polygons is the origin feature class and the buildings polygons are the, is the destination class. So you can see in this example, it will make sense to use a composite relationship, right? Because if a campus is knocked down, right, then all of the related buildings that belongs on that campus should also be deleted. As you can see, by using a composite relationship where the lifespan of the origin object or the origin class control the lifespan of the destination class, this can help with keeping our layers and also their associated feature classes or tables up to date. The second advanced capabilities in a relationship class is the ability to model cardinality, which in a nutshell is looking at the number of relationships between the origin class and the destination class. As you can see in this graphic here, we can have a number of different types or natures of relationship between the origin and destination class. To give you an example of a one-to-one -one relationship, we may have a state feature class being the origin class and governors or list of governors and their names being in the destination class. This is a one-to-one -one relationship because each state should only have one governor. Moving on to the one to many examples, right? Again, we may have states as our origin class, but a list or a table of the names of different congressional representatives as um, the destination class, in that each state in the origin class may have a number of different congressional represent representatives depending on the population of that state. 
Now, moving on to the many to one relationships, we may have a counties feature class as the origin, and then a state feature class as our destination class, in that we can have many counties right, existing within a single state. Now, on to the many to many relationships. We may have a list of stores or a feature class of stores as the origin class and a feature class showing states as the destination class. And that each store, let's say Target, right, may have branches in many states but for each state right they can also have many different stores such as um, they may have targets they may have walmart they may have albertsons they may have uh, macy's right so you can see in this example right each store Right, may have many branches in many states, but each state may also have many different brands of stores. So in conclusion, you can see that there are different ways of associating our features in a layer with attributes that are stored in other layers or tables. When we're choosing between tools like joint, relate, or relationship class, it depends on the nature of the relationship that we're trying to model. Is it a simple or composite relationship? And also, what is it that we're trying to achieve? Are we just trying to label our feature class using information that's stored in an external table? In that case, we may be able to do away with just, or we may be able to just accomplish that with the joint. And whether you're working with the joint, relate, or relationship class, as I have talked about in this presentation, the most important component is the specification of a key that allows GIS to associate objects in one feature class or table with objects in another feature class or table properly. Thank you very much for your attention. And if you want to learn more, I encourage you to visit the Geotech Center website. And here's my contact information.